this demonstration is going to be um, of the circular attachment. Now the particular cir circular attachment that I'll be using is the FOP one that is sold by FOF. Uh, the other machine manufacturers have a similar circular attachment or circular tool. As a matter of fact, uh, I think that it's probably likely that the FOF one would work on most any machine. Um, in the box comes the uh, three templates, a uh, explanation and a, a, a CD that is actually uh, quite good and can be used to understand some of what the what the tool is going to be doing. I believe the CD does not have any voice to it, so it's just a matter of really watching the pictures. I'll provide the voice in this demonstration. Okay, so these templates can be used to, for example, this one uh, just simply helps you to determine the size of cir circle that you might want for a project. And these enable you to make a four leaf flower or a six leaf flower. Now, I have this block that I have done for an earlier project and the background stitching. You see I have three circles and perfectly designed circles. Um, I have the, the six leaf uh, flower behind this background to the block. And in the corners of this block, what I did was to take a piece of contracting fabric. I sewed, uh, it was just a square, and then I sewed uh, four different sizes of circles onto the block by using different by, by using the different size diameter settings on the circular tool. Um, this was the uh, the foot I used to put down uh, this um, white trim was just a, a trim foot. I used this couching braiding foot to sew down the braiding. As a matter of fact, you can use any foot that we have demonstrated. So long as the foot feeds, it's not a free motion foot, you can use any of your feet with this uh, circular tool attachment. Now, this cording foot, this cording braiding foot, you just load it by putting the cording through this loop on the front and then down through this hole and you pull it to the back. You can see that in the center of the foot you have enough space for your needle to swing right and left and stitch uh, over the, the uh, cording. Just select a, any kind of decorative stitch that your machine might have and adjust it to where it's just wide enough to cover that cording. That foot works by having a notch on the back where, so that the foot can smoothly move over the um, cording as it, as it moves forward. Okay, we've also demonstrated previously this um, three-hole cording foot. Remember that you just take the, the yarn, uh, that's what I'm going to use here, and just feed the yarn through this loop. Well, maybe. Feed the yarn through this loop and then pull it to the back of the foot. I'll do that for all three strands of this and, and I'll have a sample of this actually available at the uh, meeting to show you. And let's see, here's one more piece. And it's real simple to, to, to do because it's got this little feeder and you'll have your, your um, yarn feeding through the foot. Again, you've got, a, you've got a wide slot in the foot you'll, so your needle can swing right or left and you'll just choose a decorative stitch just wide enough to cover your uh, yarn. And again, it works by having the bottom of the foot slotted out, see, slotted out so that the foot can contact the feed dogs but still move 
uh, smoothly over the yarn as the yarn stitched down. It'll stitch like this. And then one other foot that I thought you might be interested in is a candle wick foot. And uh, the candle wick foot would look would make some beautiful stitches for uh, use with the circular tool. Um, the candle wick foot has got a wide hole in the front so that you can see your stitches that's being formed and very importantly it has it notches so that as you make a nice lofty candle wick stitch the foot can move smoothly over it. What we've discovered is that if you try to use just a regular foot to make candle wick stitches. If you make a stitch that has a very high loft to it, the foot simply will not feed over those stitches very smoothly. And so this candle wick foot would do that for you. Okay, so again, any of the feet that we've, that we have uh, demonstrated would work beautifully with this circular tool. And just um, what I did here was I used a twin needle and just a simple decorative stitch. So twin needles work beautifully with this too. Okay, so, oh, and, and here's another sample that I made that's just a bunch of circles on a background block. This was made with twin needles and a double stitch. All right, so how does this circular attachment work? Well, First of all, it's got these two notches that come down here. And as we'll see in a minute, they snap right into the holes in the stitch plate cover of your machine. This size guide moves up and down. And you have the, the size of the circles, the diameter of the circles in both centimeters and inches. And you will move the size guide until you reach the size of the circle you want. For example, if you wanted a 9 inch circle, you would stop it here. And then, where you want the center of your circle to be, you're going to line that up with this hole in the size guide and then push this pin into the... Then your, then your fabric will move freely around that, so, that, uh, that does push pin. For example, here, if this was the center of my circle. And then you see this will, as the feed dogs move the fabric and contact your, as the feed dogs contact your uh, foot, then it will move the fabric freely in a circle. Now, I found that it's better if you have your, your machine on a flat surface. If you have an extension table that you can connect to your machine, it'll keep the fabric nice and flat. Okay, on, I think that we'll go ahead and we'll demonstrate how to use the, the guide and then come back and I'll explain to you how I made it. Okay, so now I'm at the machine and I'm going to attach the circular attachment to my machine. Again, the two prongs fit into the two holes in the stitch plate cover. And so we're just going to pop them into the, into the um, holes. And then um, what I'm going to show you is that